Warren Buffett is the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway and is said to be one of the best investors who's ever lived. From 1961 to 2020, Berkshire shares have returned 2.81 million percent versus the overall market's 23,000 percent. This means that a $1,000 investment in Berkshire Hathaway back in 1964 would have yielded a $28 million return today. Berkshire Hathaway has achieved these amazing results because Warren's ability to invest money incredibly well over the years and hold on to his stocks for the long term. However, even though Warren Buffett preaches buying stocks and never selling them and simply just holding on to them for the long term, he does still sell stocks once in a while. So in today's video, I want to discuss how Warren decides when it is time to sell a stock and let it go. And let's start off with a clip of Warren himself being asked about when he decides it is time to sell a stock. Said that your favorite time to own a stock is forever, yet you sold McDonald's and Disney after not owning them for long. How do you decide when to hold forever and when to sell? And also, are you and Mr. Munker wearing Fruit of the Looms? Charlie? <laughs> I, I think I'd better answer the question. I can answer unequivocally, I am wearing Fruit of the Loom. And uh, I'm not sure whether Charlie wears underwear, do you? I, I have a... <laughs> I haven't bought any new underwear in a long time, and therefore I'm inappropriately attired. <laughs> He's waiting for a discount. Don't let him kid you. <laughs> well, the answer it's a very good question about selling. I mean, we, it's not our natural inclination to sell. And on the other hand, uh, and, and we have held the Washington Post stock since 1973. Uh, I've never sold a share of Berkshire having bought the first shares in 1962 um, and we've held coke stock since 1988 we've held gillette stock since 1989 held american express stock since uh, 1991 um, we had actually previously been an american express one in, in the 60s in disney so there there are companies we're familiar with we generally sell well, well, we would sell if we needed money for something else, but that has not been the problem in the last 10 or 15 years. That 40 years ago, my sales were all because I found something that I liked even better. I hated to sell what I sold, but I, but I also didn't want to borrow money. So I uh, would reluctantly sell something that I thought was terribly cheap to buy something that was even cheaper. Uh, that w those were the times when I had more ideas than money. Now I've got more money than ideas, and that's a different equation. So now we sell really when we think that we've, when we're reevaluating the, the economic characteristics of the business. In other words, if you take them, don't want to name names, but take, take, take a stock we've sold of some sort. We probably had one view of the long-term competitive advantage of the company at the time we bought it. And we may have modified that. That doesn't mean we think that the company is going into some disastrous period or anything remotely like that. We think McDonald's has a fine future. We think Disney has a fine future, and there are others. But we probably don't think that their competitive advantage uh, is as strong as we might have thought, as we thought it was when we initially made the decision. That may mean that we were wrong when we made the decision originally. It may mean that we're wrong now and that, and that their strengths are every bit as uh, what they were before. Uh, but for one reason or another, we, we, we think that the strengths may have been eroded to some degree. I, a classic case on that would be the newspaper industry generally, for example. I mean, in 1970, if Charlie and I were looking at the newspaper business, we felt it was about as impregnable a franchise as could be found. We still think it's quite a business, but we do not think the franchise in 2002 is the same as it was in 1970. We do not think the franchise of a network television station in 2002 is the same as it was in 1965. And those beliefs change quite gradually, and, and, and who knows whether they're precise, you know, whether they're right even, but, 
But that is the reason in general that we sell now. All right, so Warren starts off by saying it's not his natural inclination to sell a stock. And he does think that the best investment is one that you can hold on to forever. If you're someone who has followed Warren Buffett for any amount of time, then you probably know that he is a super long-term investor who holds his favorite stocks through anything and everything. The only person who may be better at holding stocks is his right-hand man, Charlie Munger. But take a look at this. In Berkshire Hathaway's 2020 annual letter, we can see their top 15 largest stock positions, and we can see that Warren Buffett has 10 x four of them. The stocks that he has 10 x are American Express, BYD, Coca-Cola, and Moody's. Now, how did he do this, you may be asking? Did he simply buy them at the right time and then see them consistently go up and up and up over the duration of him holding these stocks, making them rather easy investments? Well, no, absolutely not. Check this out. Warren acquired his initial stake in American Express all the way back in 1963, and he has held on to it ever since. This means that Buffett has now owned this stock for almost 60 years. However, over the past 20 years, the stock has lost more than half of its value on multiple occasions. In the year 2000, American Express was worth $53 a share, and by 2002, the stock lost more than 50% and was trading at only $21 a share. In 2007, the stock made it all the way back up to $65 a share, but by 2009, it fell a staggering 85% all the way down to $10 a share. By 2014, the stock rose back up to hit $95 a share, only to once again lose 40% of its value and fall all the way back down to $53 a share. Also, note how the first time the stock hit $53 a share was back in the year 2000. So in 2016, 16 years later, the stock was trading back at where it was in the peak of 2000. And again, throughout this entire period and through all of this volatility, Warren didn't sell any of his shares in American Express, and he just held on. This is the exact same story with Coca-Cola. Warren first started buying it in the late 1980s following the stock market crash of 1987. Coke has lost half of its value on multiple occasions in the past 20 years, and even during its most recent run over the past decade, the stock has been incredibly volatile. Coke has also had a period from 2000 to 2010 where the stock produced absolutely no returns. And despite the share price of Coke and American Express bouncing all over the place and losing more than half of their value on multiple occasions, again, Warren hasn't sold a single share of either company, and he's just held on. What this all suggests to me is that Warren doesn't sell a stock just because the shares have gone down. And he also doesn't sell a stock just because the shares haven't produced any returns for a number of years. Warren continues holding on to a stock so long as he believes the fundamentals of the underlying business remain sound, and if his initial investment thesis in the company remains intact. He never looks at what the stock price is doing to make an investment decision, and he continues holding his stocks through all of the volatility that they may see. Again, American Express lost over 80% of its value from 2007 to 2009, and Warren Buffett held on. How many of us have had a stock go down 80% and remain in the company? That is true conviction. Also, it's his holding through all of this volatility that allows him to capture substantial long-term gains. This is why Warren starts off by saying it's not his natural inclination to sell his stocks, and he prefers to just hold on to them for the long term. However, the reality is that Warren does sell his stocks once in a while, so let's now discuss his criteria for letting go of an investment. The first point he makes is that he sells a stock when he needs money to buy another stock that he thinks is more attractive. He does say in the video that he will sell a stock he thinks is cheap to buy something he thinks is even cheaper, and this is really what he had to do in his early investing days. Back then, Warren wasn't sitting on billions of dollars in cash, and a lot of the time he would actually have no cash because all of his money would already be invested somewhere else. However, Warren Buffett no longer has this issue, because Berkshire is sitting on more than $140 billion in cash right now, and because Warren can't find anything attractive enough to buy. Since Warren no longer has this issue of needing to sell something to buy something else, he now sells when he re-evaluates the economic characteristics of the business. One of the key characteristics he likes to take a look at is the business's long-term competitive advantage, and if it is still as strong as he believed when he initially purchased it. So let's take a look at an example of a stock that Berkshire has nearly totally sold out of in 2021, and I will show you what I believe Warren means by a company losing its competitive advantage. So here in Q1 of 2021, Berkshire sold 98.71% of its Wells Fargo position, which is almost the entire holding. 
Berkshire has actually been selling this position off for almost a year now, but it looks like they're nearly out of it entirely. For those of you who may not know, Wells Fargo is a major bank in the US, and this bank has been struggling more than its competition due to the bank consistently being fined for shady business practices. For example, just a couple of weeks ago, Wells Fargo was hit with a new $250 million fine for failure to pay back wronged customers. When we also compare Wells Fargo's net income versus Bank of America and JP Morgan, we can see that Wells Fargo saw a massive decline to its net income in 2020, and the bank has yet to fully recover. The net income is still well below where it was pre-2020, where the competing banks look like they have fully recovered already. If we also take a look at JP Morgan in specific, its net income is spiking massively and making new highs. So Wells Fargo looks like it's wronging its customers, being slapped with fines, and losing its place among its peers in terms of profitability and growth. What's even more telling is Berkshire's second largest position in the portfolio is Bank of America, which makes up 14% of its total portfolio. So instead of selling Bank of America, Warren has decided to let go of Wells Fargo, which again suggests to me that Wells Fargo's competitive advantage has changed, which caused Warren Buffett to let go and sell it. Now, what's interesting and admirable about Warren is what he says in the next point, which he may be wrong when he sells a stock, or he may be wrong in estimating a business's competitive advantage when he first bought it in the first place. What this tells us is that Warren never knows for sure if he is making the right decisions. All he is doing is his best, and that's really all of us can ever do. I think it's unreasonable to expect anyone and any investor to be right 100% of the time, and we all need to make decisions that we feel comfortable with, and we believe are right at the time of making them. Warren is no different, and despite him being wrong on businesses in the past, he has still produced fantastic returns for Berkshire and its shareholders. What this point is really telling us is that the legend of investing can be wrong, and still questions if he is right or wrong to this day. So we shouldn't be too hard on ourselves when we do the same. Now, the last point that Warren makes is that businesses' strengths can change over time. And I think that this one is really important because it's something we need to constantly look at as investors. As we already learned, Warren is a long-term investor and would love to hold on to all of his stocks forever. But in reality, it would be unwise to buy a business and never look at it again. Businesses do change over time. And it's our job as investors to make sure our businesses are remaining strong and that their strengths are not fading away. Investing is mostly passive. But as investors, we still need to be staying on top of our holdings and making sure everything is okay, because things can change quickly and dramatically. For example, in the second quarter of 2020, Warren sold off all of his airline holdings entirely. He sold all of it. All of it in just the matter of three months. This is because he saw that the world was shutting down, and that airlines were about to start losing a ton of money. Warren selling his airlines also caught a lot of people off guard because just as recently as the first quarter of 2020, he was buying more Delta and United Airlines. So within the span of three months, he switched from being a buyer of airlines to totally selling out of the sector. Now again, Warren sold because airline travel was being shut down across the world in early 2020, which means that airlines revenue streams were essentially being shut off. If we take a look at Delta and United, their revenues were upward of $11 billion before 2020. And in the second quarter of 2020, revenue dropped by 85% down to the $1.4 billion range. So these businesses seriously got hurt in 2020 when the world was shutting down. Now, the revenues are starting to come back strong, but they're still nowhere near producing what they were at the end of 2019. This is a clear situation of the business's strength changing over time, and quite rapidly. Also, when Warren was asked about his airline sales, he replied that Berkshire felt like they were going to become poorer by holding these companies because the airlines were about to lose a ton of money. So Warren was taking a look at the underlying business of the whole airline industry, and he was seeing that the fundamentals have totally changed, which is why he sold out. Warren always looks to the underlying business to make investment decisions, and not what the stock price is doing. Whether the stock is up or down massively, he doesn't care. What he pays attention to is how well the business is performing, and if he is confident it will continue to perform well in the future. So to summarize what we have covered in this video, Warren says it's not his natural inclination to sell a stock, and he prefers to hold on to a stock forever if he can. However, back in the day when Warren didn't have as much cash, he would sell a stock if he believed he found a better opportunity. To me, this point makes more sense for investors who are fully invested in the market and don't have a lot of cash left over. If that happens to be the case, then yes, you may have to sell a stock to fund a better opportunity. 
Now that Warren has more cash than he knows what to do with, he sells when he believes the characteristics of the business has changed, just like Wells Fargo earlier, and how the business is losing its competitive advantage versus its peers. Warren also realizes that he may be wrong by selling a stock, and he may have been wrong to own it in the first place. By saying this, Warren is telling us as investors that sometimes you can't be 100% sure if what you're doing is right or wrong, and that we have to make decisions based on what we believe to be right and what we feel most comfortable with at the time of making them. Then finally, businesses' strengths can change over time, and it's our job as the investor to monitor our businesses and think if they're still as strong as when they were when we initially invested in the first place. If we do believe our businesses are losing their long-term strength, then it could be a reason to let them go, just like Warren Buffett did with his airline holdings. Investors should always look to the fundamentals of the businesses they own to make investment decisions, and not look at what the price of the stock is currently doing. Our best investment opportunities are going to come when the market is pricing a stock wrong, and investors can capitalize on the market's mispricings. So to look at what the price of a stock is doing for validation of a good or a bad investment in the short term, I think is a mistake. And the way that we gain our advantage is by ignoring the stock price and looking at the underlying business to make a buy or a sell decision. But that is going to wrap up the video, everyone. And if you enjoyed this video and you do enjoy these more educational videos, then please let me know down in the comment section below and please leave a like on the video to just let me know that I should continue making them. I do really love breaking down what Warren Buffett has to say because the guy is an absolute legend and what he says I believe just makes sense and can really help long-term investors. So again, if you did enjoy this video, then please let me know and I will continue making more content like this. But that is going to wrap everything up everyone, so I really hope you all enjoyed, and I also hope to see you all again in my next one.